great to be at such an illustrious event, one of our city's premier scientific forums. Uh, I, for the record, was one of the few Johns Hopkins graduates who didn't get a medical degree. <laughs> <laughs> but I am pleased to be speaking to an audience of such medical masterminds, and I'm delighted to report that I am feeling fine. <laughs> Although every year at my annual physical <clears throat> down in Baltimore, my GP, after all of the tests and all of the tubes in and out and everything else, always looks at me and he says, you're going to die. <laughs> he says, not from anything we've found so far, but you're going to die. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm not so sure about the New York Giants. They even have the last night's win. Apparently, they still have a pulse. So <laughs> I'm fine. I'm doing OK. Uh, you all look fit as a fiddle, and I'm sure that's part of the great atmosphere at today's events. The, uh, uh, Galean Foundation really does such uh, important work to support both research and the innovators who are developing new treatments and are saving lives around the globe. The Persian Square Foundation and the Sloan Conference Foundation are two of the city's leading philanthropies committed to helping people live healthier and much more fulfilling lives. Uh, so the uh, Galean Forum is just the event to launch the Persian Square Sloan Cancer Research Alliance. And it really is a pioneering new effort to reward scientific innovation in the prevention and treatment of pediatric, pediatric and adult cancers, which has caused so much suffering and tragedy around the world. We all know that an awful lot of these cancers could be avoided if we could just take control of our own destinies, stop smoking, uh, stop uh, overeating, stop drinking, stop using so much sugar, and a few other things that would really give the you the opportunity to focus on those cancers that are not preventable by uh, rational public health measures, which we seem to, uh, every once in a while, stumble across, but uh, don't often get done and implemented without an awful lot of controversy. Uh, I'm happy to say that New York City's life expectancy is now two and a half years greater than the average across America, and three years greater than it was 12 years ago. And it comes about for a number of things. One is smoking cessation, which saves 10,000 lives. Uh, one is a reduction in traffic deaths, which used to take an awful lot of people. Traffic deaths, as a matter of fact, will be the fifth largest killer in the world in a few years. Uh, so it's really a very big worldwide problem. It comes from faster response time with ambulances and police cars and fire trucks. So if you have a stroke or something, we can get to you quicker. And a few seconds on average really does make a big difference. And a lot of other public health measures, whether it's calorie counts or fighting trans fats or um, grading restaurants. So we put in grades in restaurants. It was very controversial. Still controversial restaurants. They get fined, don't like it. They rush to the elected officials. This is not fair. Uh, but it is also true when we put in the uh, grading of the restaurants, the cases of salmonella at our hospitals went down like a step function. Uh, so those that don't want to clean up their kitchen, I know why they're bitching, but I would suggest don't eat in a restaurant unless they have an A. <laughs> We'll outline the details of this exciting new partnership, including its first initiative, which is going to provide $200,000 each year to fund research at the most promising young, for, for the, by the most promising young cancer research scientists at our city's universities and medical institutions. And as you said, it's going to help transform the field of cancer research. It's also going to help accelerate the pace of innovation in what is one of the city's fastest growing industries and that is the commercial life sciences, and that's going to make New York City even more of a world leader in this flourishing and critically important area of research. It was fascinating when we opened up Roosevelt Island, a project that Bob Steele, it was his idea, and Seth Pinsky, who at that time ran Economic Development Corporation, to bring a major engineering graduate school to New York City, and that provided an impetus to NYU to get together with Carnegie Mellon and some other schools, get impetus to get Columbia to expand their graduate school. But everybody kept talking about engineering as social media, if you will, or IT. Mm -hmm. And I had, we had tried to get Stanford to come. They dropped out of the competition right near the end, which I always thought was a bad mistake. And hopefully, they'll come back to New York City. It'd be great outpost for Stanford on the East Coast. But the truth of the matter is engineering is an awful lot more than IT. And Cornell winning the competition really brought biotech 
uh, to this city, and then they did a partnership with the Technion Institute of Israel, which added the IT social uh, media component. So it really, in the end, turned out for New York City, I think, to be an enormous win, and it will be a great deal for Cornell and for Technion. But the spin-offs from all of this and the other people that want to come here and the other schools that want to be here, uh, once you get the big mo going with you, it really is easy to keep it going. Uh, providing By providing an annual forum here where researchers can pre present their work to business leaders and venture capitalists, the Pershing Square Sloan, Sloan, uh, uh, Sloan uh, Alliance is going to further bridge the gap between <coughs> academia and the pharmaceutical industry, which is going to spur even more innovation. For a while, it was that everybody wanted to move to New Jersey, where a big pharma manufactures products, and then in the end, they realized, I think, that you want to be there where the research is done. That's where the hospitals are. That's New York City's raison d'etre and why things are moving into the city rather than out of the city. Helped in large part by the ready access to venture capital and New York offers. We've uh, the New York offers. We have been a hot better in places where they get cheap land. Um, I don't know what else there is to do there, but that's another issue. It is fascinating if you go and take a look out in Silicon Valley. Uh, all that, not all, it's overstating it, but a lot of the companies are moving up to San Francisco or to New York because, in the end, if you're going to have um, brilliant people, you have to have cultural institutions and parks and the diversity that. Uh, people want to participate in it. And if intellectual capital is what you need for your business, it's going to be in the cities, not in a bucolic, bucolic place where it's great to play uh, golf and it's great to ride your bicycle. But, you know, as I said, uh, ingraciously, ungraciously, as it was, at a Stanford speech that I gave um, in Silicon Valley, the only place a guy can get a date is with a girl named Siri. <laughs> I got his good laugh there, actually. I wasn't sure I'd get away with that. Uh, any, uh, anyways, we have the nation's greatest concentration of uh, academic medical institutions, and every year some $1.4 billion, $1.4 billion in NIH funding comes to the researchers in the city. And as you know, our administration is strongly committed to supporting our life sciences industries, and we've made targeted investments in growing the commercial life sciences in our city. And that includes the establishment of this Alexandria Center for Life Sciences, uh, whose world-class list of researchers include labs operated by Imclone and Pfizer. And when it's fully built out, the Alexander Center will have more than a million square feet of state-of-the-art lab space. And that's a uh, space that scientists whose work uh, uh, the scientists who work the new alliance we're announcing today will really need. And we provided $5 million in financing to help cover startup costs in building new headquarters for the new Genome Center. The Genome Center is already helping our city to attract top genetic investigators from other cities and millions more in research dollars. In addition, as many of you may know, we we're also making major commitments to growing the applied sciences here, new campuses on Roosevelt Island and downtown Brooklyn and Columbia dramatically are deepening the pool of scientific and engineering talent in our city. And as we you think about it, every single one of these disciplines is melding together. And the one that has sort of gone away as a separate discipline is technology. Today, every industry has a technological component. I have a friend that runs Macy's Bloomingdale's. He's a very smart guy, and they have five hundred computer programs are building in California trying to work to bring technology to the retail business. And I don't think you can find any business, whether it's uh, uh, medicine or media or uh, sports, uh, every single one of these businesses is a technological component and the people are going back and forth and everything we do is dependent on each other and what you do in medicine, a lot of what you can do comes from the great mathematics studies, uh, the, the fundamental research, which unfortunately this country seems to have walked away from. But um, the, the, the potential for helping humanity is great, and the potential for it to be in cities like New York, and I hope it is New York, uh, keep growing. Um, I'm sure there are a number of scientists who will be among those uh, whose work is recognized by Pershing Square, Sun Alliance living right here and uh, contributing to our economy. So before I turn things back to Bill, I just want to stress our administration's uh, in, in investment in commercial life and applied sciences is part of this overall strategy that I talked about of what we call an innovation economy. Fashion design, uh, film and production, 
all of these different industries contribute to the experience here, uh, and they all <coughs> contribute to you know, one, some, one discipline to another. They're all creating jobs, whether it's white collar jobs or blue collar jobs. Uh, that's what this city needs. And in addition to making targeted investments that I've mentioned, we're also fostering that growth by keeping New York a place with creative and talented people who want to live and work. And that means maintaining a world-class quality of life with safe streets, great parks, the best cultural offerings of any city in the world. That has came from the dedication of a new Shakespeare theater in Brooklyn, right across the street from BAM. Uh, Julie Trainer is going to uh, produce the first or direct the first show there. She's doing Midsummer's Night's Dream. Uh, it's just another jewel in Brooklyn's crown and in the city's crown of cultural institutions that will get us publicity around, that will bring tourists here, will create jobs, bring people here for medical care, for education, to start businesses, to raise families, and we need more and more of that. And uh, as long as we keep crime down, and I'm happy to say it continues to go down, we're going to set another record by a lot with low crime. Uh, that's the first thing, and, and people won't come unless they can walk the streets. You can walk the streets in New York City, and you have to have something more than concrete in big cities, and we have parks that keep growing and growing. So uh, projects like the High Line, which the Pershing Square Foundation has done so much to support, our bike share program, which uh, was uh, got an awful lot of, cur of controversy when we were putting it in. New York Post wrote an editorial a day and a story in front page a day about how the world was going to come to an end if we had bicycles. I'm happy to report on it, Jinx, but as of today, we've yet to have one fatality. And the new um, uh, head of the Wash over the New York Post has his uh, city bike card. So, <laughs> in the end, uh, thank you, Persian Square and uh, Southern Conference Foundation for joining forces to help this uh, reality. Uh, it's a wonderful city, and uh, we just got to make sure we keep going. God bless. Thank you. about the contribution he's made to the city, to the country. Uh, it's incredible, and we won't have that many more opportunities to thank him always, Mayor. So I think we should do it just one more time. He's got some other important initiative to announce, so go ahead, Mike. You know. <laughs> Tessie Levine is well known by this uh, room. Uh, I don't even